Hello and welcome class. Welcome to the Underground Cave. I am Jeltip, your teacher for the, today. Uh, tonight's class is all about glazing. I'm going to show you the glazing technique and some things that you can do with glazing. Uh, last Thursday we talked about mixing colors and how to get that parent color in there. And then uh, the Thursday before that we talked about contrast. Now today's special edition of the uh, July classes comes because I will not be streaming on Thursday, uh, but we will resume our regularly scheduled Tuesday and Thursdays next week, and our last class will be next Thursday. Now, for those people that haven't joined the Discord channel to the university, for those of you that do join, I put up there uh, a miniature that I'll be painting on stream. Uh, so if you would like to get that miniature and paint along with me, uh, it will be Oman Rule, I believe his name is, uh, from Reaper Bones, the F Reaper Bones 4, I think, uh, 77662. So if you would like to paint with me, uh, listening to what I tell you to do and you do it, that's great. Or you can just copy what I do on stream. Or you can just watch the video down uh, the road. Um, I'm in the process of downloading the other two uh, videos. So I'll put those up on the YouTube channel. And then I will also get you a link in each of the respective classes to do that. But today is all about the glazing technique. And if you don't know how to glaze, uh, or you think you might know how to glaze, but you it doesn't quite turn out the way you want. Hopefully I can give you some direction on what you can do. It is different than a wash. I know a lot of people interchange glazes and washes, and it's not that way. So I'll explain more when we get on camera. However, washing, you let the water or the medium flow into the recesses, taking the paint with it. When you glaze, you have to get rid of that median, medium sorry, uh, and get the paint where you want it, whether it's in the recesses or on the higher surfaces if you're highlighting. So we'll take a look at those glazing in just a second. Uh, so we got a lot of stuff to do today. I've got a, 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 a head bust. That will work on some skin tones and some cloaks on a couple uh, miniatures. So once uh, once I get those ready to go, we will uh, we'll start our glazing lesson. So with a lot of stuff to do. So let's get painting. How's it going, everybody? Come together right now. Is, is there a right in there? Everybody come together now. That's what it is. How is it going? What's been going on? Today's lesson is all about glazing. And I'll show you exactly what we're going to do. We're going to glaze this little uh, bald head. I printed these out so I can get some practice in skin tones. So we're going to do some glazing here to help you out as well. We also have this gentleman right here. We have a nice cloak back here with some waves in it. So I'll show you how to glaze in and out of those. And then we have a cloak. This is a 3D printed model. It has a lot of texture in here. And it also has this blank cape here. And I'll show you what we can do with that as well. So if you are ready, that's what I'll be uh doing today um if you have something that you would like to glaze as far as a cloak or some skin tones go ahead and grab those minis um and i did put into the channel some things we needed we needed some kind of dark flesh tone so i've got some monument hobbies here uh you need a medium flesh tone or just a, a lighter flesh tone and we can do some mixing so there will be some mixing that we did from the last class in here as well. Um, we'll do one of the cloaks with some red oranges and then learn how to glaze red back over once we're done. 
most of you have seen that process before. And then we're also going to talk about a little bit of paint such as cuttlefish and some contrast. And these are perfect paints that can be used for glazing because they're already super thin. And that's what we want to do. We want to get some super thin paint to glaze with. So in order to do that, I'm going to grab some glaze medium. All this is, if you, if you if you're in the games workshop stuff, then it is a then it is lamen medium, and if you're into cuttlefish, you will find it as Merlin's magic medium, and if you are Vallejo, you'll find it as glaze medium. Liquitex makes a glaze medium, so everybody has a glaze medium for this particular purpose. Um, I don't think I have a glaze medium from Folkart, which is a crafting, but I'll, I'll show you a couple different mediums. It's, it, they're kind of, you can figure out which one you like better. This one is the cuttlefish one. So we'll just throw that over there. Cuttlefish is already thin, so you might not need a lot of that in the cuttlefish paint. This is the glaze medium from Vallejo. You can kind of see it's about the same. If I had some lime medium around, you would see that that would be the same as well. Water works just as well. You can use water. Uh, if you're going to thin with water, I would suggest you get yourself clear water, not stuff that you've been using to paint with. Um, and I'll just take and dab some water on here onto the wet palette. So again, medium glaze medium or water whatever thins your paint down all right so i want to start off with this uh bust right here this bald head and you can see i use all primed white so before we can do any glazing you can't really glaze over primer primer is very porous and it absorbs all of the paint so what you want to do is make sure you have a layer of acrylic paint down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with some purple. Now purple will get at the recesses, but it's also going to add a layer of acrylic so that I can do some glazing and I can do some painting on. So because it's contrast, I don't need to thin it out at all although I'll put it on the wet palette. And I'm not going to use the contrast medium. Contrast medium thins it out. That's another kind of glazing medium, the contrast medium. And so I'm just going to take this purple and I'm just going to paint on here. And you can start to see how thin this is, right? That's the glazing part of this. But this is an acrylic paint, so I need that acrylic layer over this prime layer. It's very hard to glaze over primer, as you can see. See, it's just tinting right now. It's not doing what we need it to do. Maybe I'll grab a little bit more out of here. But the glaze, if you notice, doesn't cover up any dark areas it's allowing that white and black to bleed through that is what glaze does glaze is a layer of paint that allows what's underneath to show through and as you see Now, because it's so thin, we have to let it dry. It's very wet. So glazing is not a fast process. But I'm only doing this because I need that acrylic layer because we'll get this tan flesh on it momentarily. So we don't need to use contrast to do stuff. 
we can just put a layer. Um, what do I want to do here? I think I want to get a layer of red on here. So I'm going to take Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this deep red color from Reaper, only because it's a dark red. Oops. Somehow, I got red all over myself. My little uh, monument hobby thing exploded, so let me just dry off my hand before all right there we go so what i want to do is i want to i want to start off with an acrylic layer so i will thin this down just a little bit so i'll take some water from there and just kind of paint it right in there i'm not too worried about how thin it is the the primer can show through a little bit or that gray I should say as long as I'm getting a layer of acrylic on here and I'm probably not I'm not doing the entire miniature so and this can be as messy as you need it to be we'll just go in and clean it up uh, when we're doing the entire miniature But the reason I'm not being super careful is because I have all this inside stuff that I have to get paint on. So. so the darker just means it's in shadow more. And I could do the inside of the cloak a different color if I wanted to. Remember what the contrast color is to re red? It's green, right? So I could do the inside of this cloak green to get the most contrast. Hey, Pete the Hydrator, how's it going? How is it going? So everybody come together. Are you are you here to learn how to glaze? Or are you just here to stop in and say hi, catch a stream? This isn't really a normal stream of mine. This is more of a class. We're doing the uh we're doing the little classes in July. This is in addition to what we did last year. Last year we did the beginning ones. And this year we're doing beginning part two. It's more beginner intermediate is what I like to call it. Very slow, trying to sleep, but it's too hot. Yep, it is hot everywhere. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of the a lot of the redeems are um, turned off only because of the class, but. I have the sounds in there so that if I if I miss something or you want to ask me a question and I don't see it right away, you can always make a sound and I will look up. Always highlight your questions for me and I will be more than happy to answer them for the class. And then we will resume our regularly scheduled streaming next Tuesday. Uh, we're just doing this today because I will not be around this Thursday so I figured I want to get all the classes in as much as possible so there we go we have our acrylic layer and then we'll get more red on this as we go but again it's thin you can see how it shines it just means it needs to dry so glazing is not a fast process so do not think that you're going to do this as a speed paint I mean, I could blend right now. I could sit here and put more colors in there and, and wet blend it, but we're not showing the wet blending. We're doing a the glazing. Few moments late. So glazing means I have to wait for this entire thing to dry before I can get my layers back on. 
and played a few moments later. <laughs> okay, so we have this guy. This is almost dry. It's still shiny a little bit. So we'll wait for this guy to kind of end up drying out. We'll wait for this guy to dry out. Let us go over here to this young lady. So I want to explain a little bit about washing and, and glazing uh, while we're waiting for the other stuff to dry. So when I have, when, when I take a brush and you want to make sure that the point is as, as uh, you want to make sure that the tip is as pointy as possible. As soon as you stick it into water, look what happens to the tip. It gets rounded. That's even if you end up with the medium. Okay? Even with medium, it's going to get this rounded tip. Now, what's going to happen is if I touch whatever I want to touch, all the water or medium hits the miniature first. And then in the recesses, this kind of flows and it drags the paint with it. That's a wash. So if I decided to, uh, let's see, do I have something here? So if I decided that I have this shield here and I take, I take some medium and I take some black and I thin it down. Again, I could do it with water. I have no more tip. And if I was to press on here, all of that would just flow into where around the edges. All right. So it just kind of, what I'm doing here is washing and it's not hitting anything. It's not hitting those upper areas. It's just kind of going into these creases. So washing has its place, right? And so you have to kind of clean up the pools with the washes, right? So that's what a wash does. It just kind of goes around and flows where it needs to flow around pieces. But what if I want a black just to be in a certain area? What if I wanted to make this look non-metallic, or excuse me, metallic using non-metallic paints. Well, what I need to do is take that same take that same mixture. See, I have no tip and I'm going to touch a paper towel with it. Now, I'm not going to dab the paper towel. I'm going to touch the paper towel. So, people have done this with coffee filters. Let's see if I just touch the paper towel. See how it sucks up all of that moisture? Hey, what's going on, Wampa Dan? What are you doing? How's it going today? Now I get a point back on, and watch what this does. So now, instead of it flowing into creases, I can just put it wherever I want, and it doesn't go anywhere. See, it's, it's not going, right? So if I... I just want to stick it right on the kneecap there I can do it and it's not going to flow like it fl went in here right I could paint in the recesses if I want but that's the difference between washing and I'll take the same I'll take the same amount and see what happens here when I put this on it, it's going to flow all over the place. I mean, that's probably not a... Oh, here, I'll do it on the back. So let me get some medium, some black. Okay, so here's my medium. I'm not taking any moisture off. And if I was to touch this back, it's just going to go where... It's just going to go in all these recesses where I don't want it. But if I take that same black mixture 
and get rid of that top moisture. You don't get rid of all of it. You need the paint, but you get rid of that top moisture. Then I can go in and you can actually paint the diamond and it's not going to go. See, it'll, it'll go into recesses, but it's not going to go in all of the, see how it's falling down here? So that's what I'm looking for, is I'm looking to be able to place that glaze, okay? Hopefully that explained it. And then if I want, I can just go in here and grab all of those in the recesses. So, uh, here we have this bust. We have the purple in there, so let's get some tan. And we'll get some medium in there. Thin this out just a little bit. Now, I'm not going to glaze this on. What I'm going to do is actually paint but I'm going to try to stay away from those edges where I have the purple because I kind of want that. I want that definition between the nose, the eyes. And if you're using thin enough paint, you should be able to move it around, leaving a little bit of that purple left in there. Okay. So we're just going to go through and we're just going to paint this guy's head. And notice now that because we have that first initial acrylic layer of purple in there, this is going on much smoother than if I started trying to paint on the primer itself. Oops. How's it going tonight, Wampa Dan? We're just working on a little class here for glazing purposes. Now, I, I could have done all of this early on, but I chose to wait to show you what the process is. I get, I finally get a chance to actually work on these little balding bus. I have a few males and I have some females so that I can work on skin tones. There are all different types of skin tones. Okay, let's see. under here all right there we go now that shouldn't that shouldn't take too long for it to dry and so now that i have this tan flesh remember from last thursday we were talking about mixing colors how we have this this uh, parent color, right? So we have this tan flesh, or excuse me, the, the shadow flesh. I'm going to make the tan flesh my parent color, which means that everything that I mix will have a tan flesh in it somewhere down the line. Hey, what's going on, Phil? 
So we're just going to dip a little bit of this in. And we're going to get my little mixing brush. And we're going to take one shot of the, the shadow flesh and one shot of the regular flesh to get this medium tone. And then, remember I always say we need water to make sure it's all mixed. I'm going to actually use some medium as well. Now when we glaze, we want to make sure that we have enough medium in here. Now the test or the trick that I do, hey, hey Oric, what's going on? Going all right, thanks. What about yourself? Not bad, just give me a little glazing class. Um, so I'm gonna take this and you can test out your glaze by the whiteness of uh, on your thumb so you see this white line if I can paint on my thumb like that and keep that white line there then I know my glaze is thin enough notice that my white line is covered on my thumb meaning that I don't have this thin enough so let's get some and we're always using clear water or clear medium so let's try that again. Try this again. Still too thick. All right, let's get let's get a real brush in here. All right. And this has got to be nice and thin now. All right. All right, so if that's the case, we'll just do it this way. We'll make a new pot and add to that. Okay, okay so see, I have my white on my thumb again. Let's do it again. See that? So you can see the whiteness of my thumb. That's what you're looking for. Now what you're gonna do, you're gonna take this, and I could, I could um, use the paper towel method like this, just dip it in there so I get the tip back. See all that moisture coming out? But I'm going to use my thumb for uh, the ease uh, and quickness of this. But what you do now is because you have that off, I can actually go in and start adding in this glaze. Now, if it's dry, whoops, if it goes where you don't want it, if it goes into the creases, it just means you have too much water and you're going to have to... Um, you're going to have to get the moisture off. That's why when you see me do this on stream, it's because I'm trying to get the glaze to go. So like over here. Now here's, here's the part, here's the thing with glazing, okay, is that it's not a quick process. It'll never be a quick process because you have to wait for the original original or previous step to actually dry. So right now it's all going to look nice and bright because it's wet. As it dries, it kind of disappears. Right? So as as this dries, it's going to disappear. And then I'm going to have to redo it. But what you're not going to see at least right now because of the camera is that there is actually a lighter color here. 
And so glazing allows that previous color. So when this dries and I glaze it again, that previous color or this color here is going to bleed through. So right now that dark flesh is bleeding through all of these um, colors. Hey, cutie patootie, what's going on? DJ Alboa, Albo, how's it going? First time chatter, welcome in everybody. Welcome to the glazing class. We're doing a little wow. bit of glazing today and just trying to show the technique off. So again, I could touch the paper towel or I could touch my thumb, right? And all you're trying to do is get rid of the medium moisture, the liquid moisture. All I want is the paint to touch the miniature first. So like I can, and you're just gonna paint over the high spots. And if things are not going where you want them to go, you sh it should all be painting, right? So you're painting the high spots because that's what I'm doing. I'm highlighting right now. I'm not, I'm not shadowing, but I could shadow if I wanted to. I could go back with the shadow flesh if I make a mistake. You know, like if I do the cheek, like I'll do this entire cheek here. And if I feel like that cheek is just too bright in some spots, I can go back to the regular tan flesh and I can glaze that back in. So right now it's not going to look too much like it's doing anything because I've only done like one little glaze, right? And I'll, I'll try to be nice and quick with this because we have a lot of glazing stuff I want to work on today. Just to give you an idea. But it's the technique that I'm more worried about that you understand. And that is, you don't, if I was to go in here with all the water, it would just quickly go in all of these recesses. And see where I have that purple right in there? I don't want that to be filled in with this light flesh. You know? And you figure out, okay, where do I get sunburn? That's where I want to highlight. I get sunburn on the cheeks. I get sunburn on the chin if I don't have a beard. I get sunburn on the forehead. Right? On the nose. On the ears, somewhat. The neck is always a nice place to get sunburn, including the back of the neck right here. Now I haven't done anything else. I haven't added any other colors. So once this is dry, I'll go over it again with the same exact color that I had and it will get even brighter. It will get as bright as this right here. And then I will add in, once I get it to the desired color I want, I'll add in a little bit more white or brighter flesh and we'll redo the process. So that's that's all we're doing. So I'm just taking this color and just hitting the spots that I did again. I don't know if I did these or not. So what is the point of glazing if it takes so long? Well, if you're a speed painter, probably wet blending is more of your style to go because you're constantly painting when everything is wet. Glazing, you have to kind of wait for it to dry. It doesn't take a long time to dry. You just have to wait for it to dry. But what glazing does is it allows you, and it's the same thing with wet blending, it allows you to soften those lines that layer. And I'll show you that momentarily. But we're just right now. So I'm going to go. I'm going to kind of uh, speed this up a little bit. I'm going to actually put in some higher, lighter colors. So you can see the process being formed. So if I just take a little bit more of this bright flesh. And stick it into that mixture we had. And again, since I added paint, I got to add some medium. I got to test out my glaze. So we're going to need some water. So 
test out the glaze. Okay, so I can see the white on my thumb. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and making sure that all of the places are dry, I'm going to go back over with this lighter color. And if it seems like it's going places you don't want it to, then chances are you just don't have the moisture off of your brush. And we'll get this to be a little bit rounder. Get a little bit of glazing there. Now, do you have to do glazing for your miniatures? I, I no, no, you don't have to. But if you want those smooth blends, if you want to soften your lines on things, whoops, I forgot to take the moisture off. Um, it's always a good idea to to do it. Now, I will show you a uh, how you can blend lines in. In fact. When you go from different colors, from a dark purple to a blue, all of this is glazing in the middle. It's just mixing and glazing. And that's what I mean by softening those edges. I could paint each layer in, but then you would see this line. So I want to soften that line. I want to erase that line so it gradually goes through. And so that's what the glazing does. If that's not you where you want to go with the paint, then you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't waste your time. This is just more of nice, soft highlights. And I'll tell you, glazing is a dream when it comes to female flesh. I mean, when I, I did a piece for uh, a Discord event, and I was really practicing my female flesh tones and it's it's just all soft highlights which means it's just whoops i can't talk and paint at the same time i keep forgetting to take it off okay so there's that and then what i'll do again take my parent color and this time I'll add some of that into the parent color. Now I might as well just add it in there. Test out the glaze. Glaze is looking good. Take off and then again, we just go and put it in somewhere. And what's happening here is that I'm not painting the actual color that you're seeing on the palette. What you're seeing is whatever's underneath bleeding through. So I know I added a little bit more of the higher lighter flesh and it, that's why it's looking very uh very plasticky or robotic but I'm doing it on purpose cuz I do want to show you that you can tone it down. Well, let me just let me get to that point. So here let's say I have this and I want a brighter color. Oops, explosion. All right. So let's say I want this color here. Again, my parent color, mixing in the highlight color. And we'll just make this glaze medium what I want. Okay. So there's a certain uh, there's a certain thinness that I need, and so that's why I'm kind of just rushing around because there's a couple things I wanted to show. All right, 
So get rid of the moisture. And let's say, oh, I made I made the forehead too bright. Oh no, oh no. I made the chin, I made the cheek too bright, right? So like, let's say I made that happen <clears throat> and I didn't like that. Well, what you can do with glazing is, so right, you, you make this line, okay? So let, let, let's say you have that line there and you're like, oh, I don't want that line. Well, I can come back to whatever color I need to. And just get rid of it. Is it this color I need? Yeah. So you just kind of get rid of that line just by simply going back with a little darker of the colors. Although, I don't think I was too bright with it. I think uh, I was thin enough. I think I was just didn't wait for it to dry. All right, what do we, uh, what have I missed here? Anything? Let's see. Do, 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 do. Hey, how are you feeling? Uh, my typing sucks. Good to hear. Definitely can always share in my Discord. Feedback. It's uh, the weirdest tree beast. <laughs> Glazing is amazing. Yes, it is. Um, working. Let's see. Let's see. I'm glad to have learned it. Cool. So there you go. That's so that's glazing. And I want to make sure that we have enough time to do a lot of this. But you can start to see the thin the smoothness, right? And I could keep on coming out and I could keep uh this is still a little wet, so I can bring it out a little bit. But it's uh it's the alternative to wet blending. Wet blending is more of get the paint on, then get the second paint on and, and mix the two together. And you can certainly do that. Glazing, you have to wait for the thing to completely dry before you can go to the next step. And each time you do it, the new color... Where is my, oh, this. So each new color you do, the other one kind of bleeds through unless it's too thick. So I think this is going to be way too thick. Right? So, oops, I made a mistake. That's okay. You just go back to that original flesh tone. And you just bring it back to where you need it to be. Sometimes it'll be a little bit brighter and you're going to have to do it more and more. Or sometimes it just turns out where you need it to be. Again, I can't emphasize it enough. It's not a wash. It's a glaze. Which means... Washes, leave the medium on, let the medium flow through the recesses, and then it takes the paint. Glazing, you have to take the moisture off the top of the brush first so that you can put the paint where you want it. It's super thin, so it's going to allow the, the stuff behind it to bleed through, and you just keep doing it until you get the desired highlight that you want okay so that's and that's how you get kind of do the the skin tones you you just kind of glaze them in there and we can keep glazing them in there right you just get this parent color all the time 
when you get this thin paint, you know how to test the paint, right? Look at, see, that's that's just paint. We don't want just paint, we want a glaze. So we're gonna have to get a lot more medium, a lot more water. See, we're getting there. We're getting there. You still can't see the white of my thumb. So we're still not thin enough. All right, before I move on, I do want to say that let's say I want to highlight the top of his head here. Easy, easy impressed, you have raids off. Yes, I have raids off because when I'm doing the classes like this, I don't have raids come in and, and interrupt what's going on. So people just have to come in and this way they get to ask questions. So I turn a lot of stuff off when I'm doing the classes. Raids will be back on next Tuesday, and then they'll be off for the final class. And then I'll have them all back on in, in uh, the last week of, or the first week of August. So when I'm doing the classes though, it's much easier because eventually these are gonna be videos that I put up on YouTube. And so um, I don't, I don't have, raids coming through i don't edit the audio so everything that i say in chat here uh and any mistakes i say and fumble over my words will be on the video but as far as all the other um the raids and the hosting and all that stuff uh i kind of keep those off for for these things all right so that looks like a plan I think we got our glaze just on the off chance. So I'm going to go back to this color here really quick and get this. And I, I want to show you what happens when you try to glaze before it's dry. So here we go. We got this nice and glazing right there on his, on his head. And then somebody wants to go in and they want to do more glazing. So they take the paint off the brush and then they go in and they start glazing up here. And what starts to happen, of course, it's not going to happen right now. What starts to happen is that it'll start to pull away from the miniature. Let's see if I can make it happen. So we'll give it a few seconds. Mm, nope, but I have an example. I have an example of this, which is where? Okay. So this is my little freehand gotta go have a nice night okay you too everybody come together now so if you notice up on here did i fix it i don't think i fixed it up in here there's a little dark area right about here and that is because i didn't wait for the glaze to fully dry before i went back into it and so it, it pulls it away, whatever I previously had done. So you need to make sure that it's completely dry before you start the next process. Why no raids? Because I, I wasn't looking, I, I didn't want to have, uh, I didn't want to have a bunch of interruptions when I was doing the class. That's all. There's no, there's no real r rhyme or reason. It's just so when I put them on Discord, it doesn't have a bunch of stuff popping up on the screen. And so I'm j all I'm doing now is just taking out that edge that uh e the edge highlight there. So I'm just kind of kind of soften this down. So I just used a 
little darker tone and then I'll probably end up using a little bit darker tone just to kind of soften things down a bit but there you go see it looks like he's got hair so I'm gonna have to bleed this down through here grab some of this shadow flesh that we have and again get this shadow flesh to come through here and then I could add some purple to this if I wanted to to get that purplish darkness back but I think with the shadow flesh it'll be fine so there we go And then obviously I would keep doing the purple line on the bottom left uh, aligns perfectly with the volume slider and messes me up <laughs> whenever I use it. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, if you haven't, if you haven't subs Jeltip, you're crazy. He's amazing, I promise. <laughs> uh, so obviously I would keep going with this and keep practicing, but. You know, there's a lot of material today, and I want to make sure we can get to everything I want to show you today. So we're going to uh, bring put this off to the side. This is more about showing you the glazing technique, what to do and what not to do. You don't want to wash the model. You want to glaze it. There are certain points where you want to wash something versus glazing it. So washing, keep the moisture in. Let it pull the paint through the creases. Glazing, however, you want to make sure that you're in control of where that color goes. Hence, let's go over here to the red cloak. So we painted this as a dark color. I could have painted this completely red with the red that I want as my parent color and then use the dark red to glaze in the shadows where I wanted it. But I thought maybe traditionally most people would want to highlight. So we're gonna get some red on here really quick. And again, I'm gonna use some medium just for the ease, and you don't want to do this, I'm going to do it though. I'm going to use some dirty medium. Let's get some red in here. And I'm using water as well. You can use either one. You can use just medium, just water, or both. Again, make sure I use the right red looking to make sure that I can see that whiteness in there. I can, there it is, we're good. So, pull the moisture off and paint in the highlight. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way is because I do want to show you that you're not going to see the red you're looking for right now because this paint is so thin, it's a glaze, but notice it's not going into the recesses, it's going where I want it to. If I had so much medium and so much water on this brush, it would be flowing into that crease right there, and I don't want it to. I want it to stay on the top. But what I was going to say is that um, you're not going to see the original red yet that you want to because that paint is thin and that darkness is coming through. But there is a layer. I don't know if you can see it. There is a layer 
as wet as it is of that red. And so the next time I go in with that red, it'll become a little bit more of where I want it. Again, we'll do this. And when you glaze, you really control where you want the paint to go. Okay. So we're going to we're going to leave it that way. There is something I want to show you, and that is let's say you're impatient. Let's say you're completely impatient and you want the red in there. And so you decide, all right, I'm going to do this. Look how stark of a difference that is. Eventually, we can get there. But then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take that original dark and you're going to have to thin it down. Oh, I already have it. Right here. And then you're going to have to thin it down. All right, Org, thank you for stopping in. I appreciate you coming in. Have a good night, and we'll see you soon. So what I can do is I can actually glaze dark, a darker color over that. And eventually I start blending in that lighter color to the rest of where I want it to be. So what I'm doing now is I'm glazing in or below, incorporating that red line into where I want to incorporate it in. So there's two schools of thought here. You get where you want to be and then glaze in the recesses, or you start with the recesses, and you glaze where you want to be. And again, it's not a big pro it's not a quick process. But eventually you will get both pieces where you want them to be. As long as you're not having the paint control you, like that is right there, you want to be in control. You want to say, if you have to say to the paint, ah, get out of there, then obviously you have too much medium or too much water in the brush. You want to be able to say, this is where I want you. Stay here. And each time I do this, I'm hitting it at a, a a much more controlled area. Like here, I can probably just go right there. And then the next time I go into this area, next time I go into this area, I'll just stay on the crease itself. So this is just one way, and I can always, if, if I think it's too thin, if it's not doing exactly what I'm looking for, it can add a little bit more of the red. I mean, you have to gauge the amount of time you want to spend doing this, as opposed to what are you trying to achieve. Are you trying to achieve soft, soft blends going from dark to light? Do you just want to have a highlight on there? I'm trying to get it to the point where I can start using the dark up on top so that it starts to look similar. So I never really do reds like this, but I figured this is the way I would show you right now.
because it kind of is consistent with what how we were doing the skin. Whoops. And the beauty of glazing is that you just dry off your brush and you get rid of where you don't want the paint. Okay. So we'll just kind of bring in this red into that hood. And you can start to see, see how it's flowing into that crease. I didn't get all the moisture off I was looking for. So that's why I have to get it off now. But hopefully you can start to see it coming alive uh, or getting to the, the red that you want it to. And it's just over and over. We're just doing this over and over. I might have started with too dark of a red. I probably should have started with the parent color. But over here, it is looking a little different than the rest of the red. Like, remember, we started with this dark red here, and now we're trying to get this to be nice and red. Oh. You can quickly tell as you do this when you didn't take off moisture. It's pretty evident to tell. And what I'm trying to do is trying to pull it so I can show you that uh, what happens when you don't wait for it to dry. But when you're watching people paint, this is what they do. And you know what? I'm such a poor host. I don't have any music for you guys listening to. I wonder if we should get some music on. Whoops. I will get music on as soon as I clean this up. Clean this up. That was me backing out very messily. Well, let's get some music on. Let's see. So since it's a slow process and I'm probably boring as heck, let's put on some calming cinematics so people can just fall asleep. That way people won't recognize my mistakes when I make them. I'm going to try to get this red back to... And what I can do is take some of this original red and some of the darker red and really blend in to soften those edges. Always getting rid of the moisture. Whoops. So eventually I will get to the red that I'm looking for. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling this up by adding some orange to it. With red, there are two ways to go. We talked about this a little bit um, a few weeks ago. But you can either take it towards the pink side 
or you could take it towards the orange side, the fiery yellow side. When I'm doing cloth, like this cloak, I like to go on the warmer side. So I will go on the oranger side. So like I said, so when we were talking about mixing, and this is a good lesson for people, especially if you weren't here yesterday or Thursday, I didn't mix this dark red in. So it doesn't have this parent color of this other red that I'm using, which is probably why I'm not getting quick results. I'm getting results, but I'm not getting them as quick as I want. If I was to take this orange, and this is a very bright orange, but if I was to take this red, this orange, this is what we did on Thursday, and I take some of this dark red that we used, I will get this color and of course we want to glaze so this glaze will be much more powerful because it has already that underneath color and because I've now used both reds in this color with the added orange you can start to see a little bit better highlight going on so mixing colors is almost key to when you're blending because you don't know where colors are coming from unless you can match them and so you can start to see how this orange is starting to really take with this glaze so a little lesson we're, we're going back to what we did on Thursday by mixing colors. So if I had mixed this darker color and used, whoops, used the uh, darker color with the parent red that I want, it would have made life a little easier for me. But you can start to see now how I could glaze each way and that red up there that was so bright is now kind of looking like all of these over here. All right. And then what I can do is I can add more water. I can add more medium. And it dot of orange get the moisture off and do it again and what's gonna happen is it's gonna look more orange than it is red and do you remember how we get that red back we're gonna glaze back over with some red once it's dry And I'm purposely not doing this little area that is like in the shade because it's got to look like it's in the shade. And I'm really only doing the back. I could have spent the whole time doing the whole thing. I like that highlight. I need to be more patient. <laughs> Yeah, so this is just mixing. It's just taking that parent color of this red right here, mixing in that dark color that we started with, and now I'm going with a nice warm orange. And I'll give it two shots of orange. And what's gonna happen here? I gotta give it some water. And I'm just going to do the bottom of this. 
right? You still want to be a little controlled with your highlight. I'm still been a little control it, even though I haven't set it. Like you can see there's this little edge right here. It's just the tip of this crease. And I'm staying on the bottom here. Right? And I could go up here to the top and just get like some of this top. So you don't want to lose you don't want to lose everything else you learned about miniature painting just because you're glazing. It still follows the same premise. You just have to. And I can use the same color to do it again and it'll brighten things up. But notice the softness. Even though that there's a line here and I could take that line and take this dark red and this light red or this parent color red right and I can glaze in right around there and it will take out some of that line and you could just keep doing that over and over I'll take more of this dark this is all that mixing that we were talking about on uh, Thursday that you can just kind of soften that edge right straight down come back to this and again you this could all be considered wet blending if you wanted to wet blend But see, now that line has gone away. You don't have that big orange line right there anymore. And we'll just wait for this to dry. But notice that I have all these other pieces that I could go back over with the same color. Right? So if I do the same color, it's really just... It's taking that same color and bleeding it through. Right? I, I don't know how else to say what glazing does other than that previous color bleeds through and if it's the same color as what you've been using then it just kind of enhances the color to make it more of a highlight right so i haven't really added any white here we just kind of kept everything where it's supposed to be Okay, now if you want to, you can take some orange and just a tad bit of this just to get a nice orange color in there. We will thin that out with some yellow, or excuse me, some water. And I know what you're going to say, oh wait, don't go that bright, don't go that bright. Well, you have to kind of go this bright. Even though it's not going to seem like it's bright. You need to get this as bright as you can get it. For the red. Because I'm going to show you. How to glaze red back into your piece. Because right now it's just looking pretty orange. Because that's all we've been adding in is orange highlights. <laughs> hey Effie how are you doing? I haven't seen you in ages. Although I haven't really been lurking, so I haven't been in anybody's streams either. But how have you been doing? I've been seeing a lot of stuff on Instagram that you've been doing. A lot of incredible stuff. And I will do down below here as a nice highlight color. So there we go. So in itself, it looks pretty good. If you like this orange maroon look, you can uh, keep it there. Or if you want to bring it farther in, you know, like maybe this highlight here, this highlight here to, to make it look a little bit more 
um, sectioned off with these creases. Because they're, they're not so out in the open. But we have this, and and I can now that I've added in this yellow, or excuse me, this orange, I can actually go in and add this orange in, and it's not going to be so overpowering, but it is going to be pretty bright. And I'm only hitting the edge. So again. Gonna take this orange, and because I've already got orange in here, it's not going to be as stark of a contrast because the orange is already there. Thank you. I'm well, just melting the heat. How are you? I'm in my little cave, so I I'm not melting, uh, but I will be when I go back upstairs so I may just live in my cave for a little bit all right okay so here you go here is the so we started with this right we started with this dark red that's what it looked like beforehand and now it has gone to something that looks like this right and if I wanted to I could actually bring out a little bit of ivory with that orange and just hit certain areas, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to glaze in red. I'm going to glaze red back over. I think my paint is really warm because it wants to pop out of its uh, shell. Now, this is transparent red from Monument Hobbies. There's a uh, Reaper makes a uh, clear red and there is red ink. Uh, or you can go back to the original red. I could go back to the red I was using before. Um, I could go back to this red right here and thin this out. So, see, you can't see the white in that thumb. That's not a good glaze. Got to make sure it's nice and thin so you can start to see what's going on. There's a difference. See that difference? Show you again. Just so you don't think I'm lying to you. Whoops. Painting thumbnails is a good way. I would stay in a cave forever if it was cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool, and we have some dehumidifiers making it pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, again, getting the moisture off using a bigger brush. But this time, I'm not going to just stay on the highlights. I'm going to go everywhere with it. So it's not like I'm painting or washing, but... I'm painting the whole layer. I'm giving it a whole layer of red. That's all I want to do. And this was this was the red paint. I didn't use the transparent red like I was going to. This is the actual red that is in all of except for the initial dark red. It's everything I've been using. You can only do this step after everything has been dry. And what's going to happen is it's going to tone everything back down. So I have to wait for this to dry. But once I, once I have it dry, I'll show you what the transparent red does. But the transparent red is going to bring it back to being red. 
So let's see. We don't have we don't have the highlights bright enough on here, but just to show you, if I was to take this orange and I'm just gonna make some highlights on these scales here, just to get just to kind of ruin these suspense for you, so you can see where I'm going with this. Okay, so there is some orange on there. And let's say that I have in between that orange, let's say I had some darker red, something like that. So now I have to wait for this to dry. But I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna glaze. And when I glaze over it, what happens is, is that the highlights will still be there, even though you can't see them right now because it's wet. The highlights will still be there, but they'll have a more reddish hue. It'll be more subdued. And that's what you're looking for. So we're going to bring this back to red, even though that looks nice the way it is. I think it's still too orange for my taste. So I'm going to bring it back to red. And as soon as I can get the right consistency. What's making it hard is that my thumb is now red. And my white of my thumb is red, so it keeps messing me up. All right. Looking good. So what I can do is take this transparent red, get rid of that, and again, well, I got too small of a brush. Sorry about that. Try it one more time. This time with feeling, we're going to take this and get the moisture off and just paint all of it. It's not a wash. I'm painting the entire cape. And it's going to tone down the orange even more towards the red side. And that's how you get a nice red cloak with all of the highlights and it looks red. I could do this with pink. I would do the same thing if I was using white. But the other thing that this glaze is doing is it's softening all of those orange and those those lines down that where the highlights are. So looking at it from this way, you don't see that orange as much as you do this way. And that's all the glaze is. So you take, you take your glaze. I'll take this glaze again. Get rid of the moisture. I'll dab it on the cloth. And you're just going to paint. And if it, if it pools, you have too much moisture on. So you have to take the moisture off and just paint as if you were painting with a watercolor with a, if it seems to be flowing into creases, too much moisture. See, it's pooling. I have too much moisture in there. There we go. That is a red cloak. Hey, Yoten, how's it going? So we've done some flesh. We've glazed in some flesh. You can start to see now how that light color has dulled because it's been drying. You can still see some of it, but it goes away after a while. And this is a great way to start 
glazing this again. Oh, oh, hold on. Joker, Joker, on Joker. Let's see, L10 Joker. Lion Joker. That's what, right? Am I right on that? Lion Joker? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So that's that. And then there is the red cloak, right? All glazing, just glazing. Knowing how to glaze is a very important tool in your arsenal. You don't have to glaze if you're if you want to do something quick. But if you notice, and this is where we're going to go next. If you notice, remember why I put that paint up there? It kind of looks like it belongs up there. Like I never even painted that um, a different way. So that's glazing. And that's, that's how I do red, by the way. If you want to bring it back to red, you have to really push that orange or that pink. And then glaze the red back. Difference between glazing and washing is the moisture. What do you want the moisture to do for you? Do you want the moisture to flow into the crease and pull the paint with it? Or do you want to have control of where that paint goes? Which is what we're going to start looking at next. Remember folks, if you have any questions, don't forget to highlight it. I think I made it 10 points uh, to highlight your message. You can also use sounds in case I missed the question. But I think the next one we're going to do is this 3D printed young lady. And I'm going to do her cloak. It's a nice flat cloak that I printed out. But for this one, I'm going to actually do glazing a different way. And remember, you can't really glaze. You can't really glaze on primer. So you have to get some acrylic on here. So let's get some acrylic green on here. I think I'm done with this green. I think this has been out too long. I'm just getting a acrylic layer on here. It's not a glaze, even though it's looking like it's more of a glaze than I originally intended. We're going to get this hood done and this cloak here. I'll let this dry a bit. But that's all right. I just need an acrylic layer on. Just like how we put purple on this thing. Just how we put purple on here to get the acrylic uh, tan on. I just need this acrylic layer so that I can get the real green on here sorry for not being around more I've uh, been in rehab I was addicted to the hokey pokey don't worry though I turned myself around there you go congratulations on turning yourself around that's not that's something I never put my hand in I always kept my hand out That's what it's all about. Hey, Warlander. How's it going, my friend? What have you been up to? How's life in the fast lane? You still live in the fast lane, right? You gotta live in the fast lane. You now got an 11 month. And she keeps you going. I'm doing awesome. Bitter brush, what's going on? How's it going? Wow, look at all the cool kids coming in the house today. <laughs> all right, so we're just waiting for this green to dry. So for those of you that uh, just were coming in, maybe you've been lurking around, we've been doing glazing today, just demonstrating a little bit of glazing. 
So we glaze this little head bust a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit more dull now because everything is drying. And we just did this cloak. We just glazed in that cloak and you can start to see how red it is. Still got the highlights, but they're much more red. The more you talk about glazing, the more I want a donut. The glazed donut monster, yes. Yes, glazed donuts. <laughs> you know it, we were a two party. Ice. Well, thank you all for stopping in. You got accepted to the new job, nice. And is the new job involved painting or hobbying of any kind, or is it, or is it uh, a regular job? I don't know. Miniature painting is regular job, right? All right. So I'm going to take some contrast paint, and I like the contrast paint because it's thin enough that it will act as a glaze. On its own. Now I could thin it down a bit, but I don't want to. I want to get that dark color right in there. So I'm just going to go in and just like I did with the red, I'm just going to glaze over this entire cloak. And again, I have to wait for it to dry. But the thing is, is I just, I don't want to wash the cape. Right? Most people think that glazing is more washing, and it's not. It's just getting thin layers of paint applied to areas you want to have it done, and not so much in the creases. You can wash it, but that's not why we're doing it. Okay. So that is my color. So this is Orc Flesh contrast. We'll make this my parent color. So let's get some of this. While this is drying, we're going to get some of this on the wet palette. This looks like a good spot. For those of you that are cringing at my wet palette, I implore you to go over to see Commander Mittens after class if she's on. She has a very, very organized, neat, wet palette. She puts everything in little spaces. Me, if it's got an open space, it goes. It goes. All right, so that is, that's the color I want in everything that I mix. Now I'm gonna use something called <laughs> Ditto Gel Tip. <laughs> Right? I'm going to use cuttlefish because I hear these are glaze paints, which means that they're super thin already. I've never used them, so we're going to try to give it a shot. So this one's Castaway Green. I'm going to give it a shot. I think I need to shake it up more. Indeed, and I need it. I would agree they're thin. Yeah, it, it's made for the glazer, and and you you can get some really good blends with this. That's from what I hear. So the way I'm gonna do this one is I'm not gonna build upward. I'm gonna build downward. So I'm gonna start with the light color, and then I'm gonna keep gradually mixing until I get to the color to kind of move it all around, and. One thing you could do with glazing, that's how they do OSL, and that's how they do non-metallic metal. And it's just this constant back and forth. So that's why I'm trying to show you both ways that you can do this. Uh, some schools of thought is to move it up the ladder to the highlight color like we did on the red. So I've never done, I've always moved up the color. So this is totally new for me but I, kind, I know how to go back and forth to fix things. So I know that the end product is something that I want like right here. So I'm just going to 
glaze this. Right, I'm gonna glaze wherever I want my highlight, but you don't wanna do you don't wanna do too much. You don't wanna make it all mint green or you just wanna catch wherever that light is as thin as possible because there'll be ways of softening that down. And this is more about showing you how to get those hard edges softened. And so I would say you can either do this for highlighting, although I would use I would use my uh, the how I did it for the red, and then do this when you want to do um, do this when you want to do two different colors. So, all right. So there we go. That's kind of where I want to end up. So remember when I showed this off? Uh, probably not since I can't find it. Remember when I showed this off? This was me putting in the purple and the blue. And then I just mix them. And I kind of glaze in between getting rid of all of those layer lines. Right? So that's kind of what I want to do here. Is that I want to take some of this light green and some of this dark green that I had and mix it together. Probably a little bit more of this light green right now. Something like that. And we mix it together with water. We like water. Get rid of the moisture and then I'm just going to kind of go on the outside. Wherever that edge line is between the two is what I'm going to try to pull out. This is a much more difficult way of doing this, but it is a viable way. You just have to choose which way you like the best. And again, if it's going in recesses where you don't want it, it just means that you have too much moisture on your brush. And I'm hoping in the next 10 minutes that I can get a almost done product. But you can start to see a little bit more of the softening that's going on here. So see this hard edge. Now I'm just going to kind of get that hard edge right there. And it's still going to look a little still gonna look a little hard around the edges no pun intended but what's gonna happen is I gotta mix more of that dark green in there so like right here at the top of the head maybe I kind of come out just a little bit so what I want to do is I just want to erase any edge lines the best I can. And I know that I'm going to create more edge lines with this secondary color. Right? So what I need to do is once that's all taken care of and you've softened out your first edge lines, you're going to soften out your next set of lines by just mixing in a little bit more of that darker color into the lighter color. And one thing that I don't do is I don't, I should leave this color in case I need it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this color and do the same thing, except now I have a new edge line that I have to worry about. And that's more over here.
And so I'm just trying, there's like this ghostly, there's this ghostly uh, edge line from the other layer we did. So that's what I'm trying to hit. And hopefully as I do this, it starts to erase. I want to use cuttlefish with my airbrush too. Uh, yeah. I mean, like I said, I have, the only cuttlefish stuff I've used is the fluorescence. Um, and I really enjoy the fluorescence. Uh, but I don't know. I, I don't usually use an airbrush, so I don't know. They, they should work fine because they're pretty, they're pretty thin actually, which is really nice. Like I said, you're seeing the first time I'm using these on, on the stream. So again, I'm just, I added a little bit more of that dark green and I'm just trying to get, I don't want the extreme, uh, shadows. I just want sort of a pseudo, like I'm going to leave it, if I was to, if I was to shade this using a wash or whatever, those dark shadows would be there just kind of, um, in the recesses. So now I'm just trying to paint the recesses in. So like this. So I'm trying to keep those dark recesses in there, just trying to get, and this is a much d more difficult way of doing stuff, but the back and forth is what you really need here. So like, if I'm like, if, if I say, oh, you know what? I kind of like that, but I don't like what I did over here. So I'm going to give this more of a, more of a highlight right there. I can do it. But it still follows that you have to wait until everything dries. I'm just doing it quickly because I'm just kind of showing off a little bit of how this type of technique you could still do. Right? It's just a matter of... It takes a little bit more practice, but most people that do NMM or OSL, they'll always go back and forth with their shades and their highlights so it's always good to know how to do things one way and reverse okay so we got that hopefully we're softening stuff down adding a little bit more of this dark green to get as much softness as I can. Whoops. So there's a little bit of high spots here that I want to make sure I preserve. And we can go back to cuttlefish. And we can get our original line back. And eventually what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll just do the same thing I did with the with the red and that is I will glaze back in a green.
Now, there's not much texture onto this cape as much as uh, one would hope because it is a 3D print. But there's enough texture on here to know where the folds of the cape are. So I'm just kind of edging a little bit more of the highlight right here. Maybe right on the top of the hood. And I'll do one more pass right here. And we'll add a little bit of this to this green here. Again, a little bit. Again, just trying to soften out some of these lines. So that's the that's the name of the game with glazing. It's to soften out blend lines. It's to make transition smoother. You can always go back and forth. So let's see. See, this is great glazing music. Although it sounds like Christmas music. And everything outside doesn't scream Christmas. get some going over here so contrast paints and um, cuttlefish paints I think lend themselves to wet blending as well I'm mixing them together just to get this glaze Soften the glaze right here. Soften the glaze right here. And it's just a matter of me getting rid of that high spot, softening down the higher edges, keeping the black, or excuse me, the dark areas together. It's just a matter of over and over, you are getting rid of as much of the hard line as possible. So that it just looks like everything gets blended in. So up here. And then right around this edge here. So there we go. We got the green in there. So one last thing I'll do. I'm going to add. Uh, what do I want to add to this? Oh, I used to have a linen white. I used to have an ivory that I really liked. I don't see it in here. I don't think there's anything I have in here that can help me out. But what you can do is you can add a little bit of white or a little bit of uh, ivory to this to soften it down. And then glaze it down to green. This already looks like I glazed it down green. Let's see. I gotta have it here. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I bet you. Actually, I'll use this. I 
only going to add a touch of this. This is White Scar from GW. Because I can't find my Ivory from Reaper. But this is thin enough. And I'll add some green to it so it really becomes bright. So the only reason I don't want to do white is because it'll make it look too metallic-y or a harder surface. But what I can do is I can hit certain spots here. Again, as a glaze, right? I don't want this to go all over the place. And then get right here. And right there on the top of the head. Why not? Alright, so. There's that. And now I'm going to take the original green that I had. And this time I'm going to really thin it down. And we know how to test it out. I'm going to use my thumb. Right? So you have your thumb here. A little too thin. Okay. So there you go. There is the green. It doesn't look like much, but trust me. So what we're going to do is get rid of the moisture on it. Dip it on the paper towel if I want and I'll do the small brush up here but I'm just going to glaze over everything it's not a wash it's a glaze so you're just gonna wash over everything if it was a wash it would just go in the recesses I want it to go over all of these colors in fact I'll show you you may have to do it a couple times if you have it too thin That's why if I had the ivory, it would make this a little bit warmer color. And I could have I could have done a little bit more glazing to get rid of and edge out that um, circle up on top. I just want to make sure that you can see the difference between the two. So I've done three coats. Because this is a small brush, I'll be using a bigger brush. But the other thing that this glaze is gonna do is it's gonna bring everything together. It's gonna blend it all back together. So you can see how the top is a little bit more green than the bottom. So I'm just poking the paper towel. I'm just touching the paper towel, letting it do its thing, right? And then you're just gonna paint over everything. It's a paint, it's a glaze. And I just want it to, I don't want it just to go into recesses. I want it to paint and, and do a layer, a filter of green. I don't know if I'm going to have enough to do a third coat, but. But I have to wait for this one to dry.
See, it's coming back to what how we were using the glazes. So it, it's back to where it originally was. The only thing that I'm doing here is I'm blending out all of, I'm softening up a lot of these other edges. See that circle up there? Even though it still is protruding a little bit, it's still got that hard edge to it. It really is kind of softening down. And if I did better glazing instead of trying to do this quickly out for the class, it would be a little bit more of a blend like that cloak right there. So. So it looks like this is all set. So I'll just kind of go back over the top here. Again, it's all just a glaze. It's a filter, bringing it back to the green because it got to be a little too bright. There we go. And so you could do this kind of with flags. You could do this with tunics. You could do this anything that doesn't have very big folds like this one had some awesome folds for us to work on right this one not so much but this is kind of how like a flag might be look right with the just the little waves going back and forth something like that see and then we still have we could do the whole sides here green and then So you can still see that this is wet because it's shiny, but look at that. We have that, and then we have, you know what? Let's go back to the face. Get some bonus material in now, right? All those people that went to bed. Oops, sorry. So again, here's the tan flesh. We're gonna work that in to this light flesh, remember? Get it nice and thin. Nice and thin. Of course, the thumb doesn't always do a good. Now I'm just playing, but I'm just trying to figure out. So I just showed you how to do the, uh, how to go backward on your glazes. So if you wanted to, you could take this, right? You could take this and do the same thing that we just did over there. Get this to be nice and uh, bright here. there on the forehead looks good okay and then we'll get a little bit down here just so you can start to see so there you go there's where I want my stuff and then I can always take this tan flesh and bring it back down a little bit I'm just getting rid of the hard edge lines. And then 
you could just take that tan flesh, thin it down to a glaze. So it's just about the consistency that you have to kind of practice and making sure that you get the moisture off. And then I can just go ahead and just glaze over everything I just did. And it softens out all of those lines. And it might take a little bit of time here and there to soften those lines out, but that's why we say this is not the fastest. Not the fastest uh, in the business, right? That is glazing, folks. And all I'm doing now is just kind of getting rid of all those edges that we just created. See that edge right there? All I'm trying to do is get rid of that edge. And I'll take a couple times here and there. I probably won't be able to get rid of it before we leave. But you can keep playing over and over and over with the glazes and eventually it will smooth itself out. Um, let's see. I, I already showed you the. I already showed you the two area, the the purple and blue. But this model here is all about glazing. I kept glazing the sword, glazed it his skin then I had to put stuff back in so this is this is one glaze uh, I don't know if I have any other glazes to show off at the moment oh I do I do so a lot of glazing went into this into his tunic so I started off with a uh, a Carrick stone, and I kept glazing in, glazing in uh, ivory, and um, ivory. Uh, I glazed in I, ivory was the last one. I can't remember the other color I used. It was a step up from Carrick stone. Maybe bleach. No, I don't want to say bleach bone. That dates myself, but I can't remember off the top, but. It was just mixing and glazing, mixing and glazing, and that's how I did this here, this piece. So, that is all about glazing. Does anybody have any last minute questions before we decide to end this stream? Anybody still with me? <laughs> Everybody's probably lurking, but there we go. That's what that looks like without uh, without it being wet. So we just kind of softened up everything from where it was. So this is, we took the highlights and went back down to create a, uh, a glaze effect here. We started with the dark color and we worked our way up to the highlights. Each one of these had a filter on it filtering green and filtering red uh do i record my 
streams. I don't record them. I, well, I do. I don't want to say I don't. I don't have it set up to record all of them. I have it set up to record like the past, I don't know how many of them. But for the classes, I download them and I do save them. And I will post each one of the classes up on YouTube uh, that I've done so far this year. I have the four that I did last year. If you join the Discord and go into university, uh, you'll get links to the first four classes that I did last June. It was all about beginning painting. Uh, we talked about dry brushing, color blocking, um, edge highlighting, you know, that kind of stuff. And then we took it one step farther in the last class to give you some basic, basic detail stuff to make your miniature um miniature your own this year i decided to expand upon the beginner painter and bring you into some a little bit more of the advanced techniques they're not they're not uh expert techniques everybody uses all the techniques in a different way but this year we talked about glazing which i just did i talked about color mixing last thursday and i talked about contrast how to put contrast into your miniature so that it gives you a direction to go to and then uh next thursday not this coming thursday next thursday we're gonna put it all together everything that we've done and um i put a miniature in the discord of what i'll be painting that night which is uh oman rule uh it's a bones for reaper piece and if you want to paint along with me next week feel free to um but that's what i'll be painting and i'm going to be putting all of this stuff together i'm going to be putting in the contrast colors or the temperature contrast whatever we talked about we'll be color mixing we'll be glazing we'll be doing all kinds of stuff and we'll get a little bit of uh we're gonna try a little bit of osl you know i i, I need to play with osl this is one of the OSLs that I did. Um, I still need to play with it a little bit more. I was playing with fluorescence on this one, but uh, we'll get into that. Uh, like I said, glazing is a really great technique for non-metallic metal and OSL. So that's what we're gonna do next Thursday. There is no stream this Thursday. I just wanna remind people of that, but uh, if there are no other questions, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the music. And I'm gonna bring us back out. I'm gonna say thank you everybody for stopping in for tonight's class of glazing. Uh, I will download this one. I will get links to you for the um, YouTube um, channels. And then you can see all of the uh, stuff we did last year and so far what we did this year. And then next week, we'll be working on uh, Oman Rule. I have to order them or I have to find them. But that's the one I think has a lot of potential that you can actually practice everything that we talked about. So if you're new to painting, like uh, Lion Joker, uh, feel free to enter the Discord. Go look at the other uh, four videos from last year as well as the ones that I put up this time. And then hopefully you'll be set to paint next Thursday. Uh, I will open up the raids and I will open up all the other stuff next Tuesday. I will be streaming next Tuesday. Uh, I'm Well, we hope we're streaming next Tuesday. Depends on if I make it home or not. But uh, yeah, so next Thursday is our last class for July. Uh, people like them. I've heard a lot of good things about them, so we'll see what we do next year. But now we have eight under the belt. So join the Discord so you can find those. Um, other than that, I don't think there's too much more I have left to say. I do want to say that because this is a class, I do not go raiding into anybody. Uh, much like I don't accept raids for the class, but I will tell you who is on. So you don't have to look and if uh, if you don't have it open. But uh, Thunderhead Studios is on. 
He's great. Useless Wizard is also a fantastic painter. You can learn a lot from him. Screen Games is on. Uh, sleep underscore T. Zephopod Studios. So he, I think he's playing Seven Days to Die. But this, uh, if you want cuttlefish paints, right here. If you want cuttlefish paints, Zephopod Studios is online. You can go over there, get a link to his uh, to his store, and you can get some cuttlefish paints so that you can do your own glazing. Uh, Wombat Combat Prime is on, and I think that's pretty much all I have that is actually doing uh, artwork and painting. Um, if you're into games and you're into some entertainment, The Litching Hour is also online. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for stopping in. I appreciate every single one of you, and you guys make this worth it. I'm glad that I can get you a little chance to practice your painting and give you some helpful hints into how I paint miniatures. Again, pretty much everybody uses these techniques, but they all use them differently. So hopefully you'll find your own way of painting miniatures. But thank you so much, and we will talk to you next Tuesday if everything goes well. Good night, everybody.